let's go over the three and a half inch kit and see what all is included. We're going to start over here. We've got our tubular upper control arms. These are going to correct the suspension geometry, make sure we get a proper alignment and keep that factory ride going over. We've got our sway bar relocation brackets as well as our differential relocation brackets. Over here we've got our strut spacers for the front, which is where our lift is going to come from. Coming to the back here, we've got our rear track bar bracket, we've got our rear shock relocation brackets, and finally we've got our rear coil spacers that are going to bring the rear up. Alright, let me roll this out of the way. We'll get the Tundra up in the air to a reasonable level so we can remove the tires without hurting ourselves, and then we'll get started. Uh, for now, let's go ahead and get the Tundra up in the air. First step to installing the lift is removing the factory skid plate. I don't know how to undo this, I'm not going to lie. Alright, with the factory debris deflector out of the way, we're going to go ahead and unplug the electronic steering. Let you push it in, flip this up. Plug it. One and two. This will protect it from the shock of having the tie rod separated and uh, also keep it from damaging the electronic steering sensors while we move those tie rods around installing the lift. Uh, after that, we're going to go ahead and remove the factory sway bar. We've got points on the frame as well as points on the lower control arm. All right, now we're going to get to it. First thing we're going to do is loosen this tie rod in preparation for removal. We're going to leave it finger tight so the knuckle doesn't flop around on us while we're doing everything else. Next we'll come up here and we will loosen the upper ball joint. We'll remove this J clip and go ahead and untaper the ball joint. We'll also untaper this tie rod. And then we've got our ABS line. We'll go ahead and remove the sensor and the bracket and get that up and out of the way. Along the back side here, we'll remove these 12 millimeter bolts that hold the brake line to the knuckle and the upper control arm. Once we've got those removed, we'll remove the caliper and hang it out of place. I've got a couple of zip ties here that are going to hold it up against the frame so it doesn't dangle on the brake line. Once we've got the caliper off, we'll go ahead and pull the rotor out of the way, pop this dust cap off, remove the axle nut, unseat the axle, and then the only thing left for us to do to remove the knuckle will be these two bolts that hold the lower ball joint to the knuckle. Once we remove those, we'll get the knuckle out of the way and that's going to give us plenty of room to remove the strut and address the upper control arm. Now, the passenger side upper control arm is a breeze. The driver side, the way things are lined up here, we actually have to bring the truck down, remove the air box, and the ECU to get enough room to slide that long upper control arm bolt out of the way. We can do it, it's just going to take a little effort. That's why I chose the driver's side to show you on camera. I've got the nut loose on the tie rod. I'm going to give it a, the knuckle a couple of taps to unseat this taper. You don't have to go crazy. This, this knuckle is aluminum, so a couple of taps should unseat it. He said.
mechanic we actually mechanic and Take those threads and keep up with it. All right, we've got the driver's side knuckle out of the way. Now we need to address the driver's side upper control arm. What we're gonna need to do is lower the truck down, get under the hood, remove the air box on the driver's side, remove the ECU, and then we'll be able to slide that upper control arm bolt out. The passenger side, it slides right out without an issue, but we've got some stuff holding us up on the driver's side, so we need to deal with it. Boy, that air felt good. All right, because we are unhooking the ECU, the first thing we need to do is unhook the battery. So we'll get over here, unhook the battery, then everything else is gonna happen on the driver's side. I'm gonna take this tube off, set it aside, and then I'm gonna open the air box, two clips, Hinge the lid back and it's going to come up. Now you can unplug the air sensor if you want to. I'm just going to set this out of the way. It's not going to damage anything. I'm going to pull the filter out, set it aside. Now the lower portion of the box is uh, sitting on, uh, it has rubber feet that are pressed onto studs. You just give it a firm tug, it'll come up, and you'll be able to maneuver it out of the engine bay. With it out of the way, you can see what we're going for here. Here's the ECU, here are the mounting brackets. So we're gonna unplug the ECU, we're gonna unbolt these brackets, we're gonna move this out of the way, and if you can see, which you probably can't, which is why we're here, uh, the upper control arm bolt is here, it needs to slide exactly where this ECU is. Get that out of the way, flip that all the way back, and Unplug. All right, now we got this and set this in a safe place. Now the ECU is out of the way, and from the wheel well, you can see this is the head of the bolt. It has to slide this way, and before the ECU was all but blocking every bit of this. Now we've got a clear path, so I'll be able to unbolt it and slide it all the way out. All right, now the bolt's loose and we'll be able to slide it out. You'll hear the control arm fall because I'm not there to catch it on the other side. But we'll bring it all the way out. Ow, my fingers. All right, so I've brought the truck up to a more comfortable working level. We're gonna go ahead and install the upper control arm once I get that bolt in and we'll go ahead and finger tighten down the nut, then we'll drop the truck back down so I can reinstall the ECU and the air box.
So the strut spacer simply sits right on top of the factory strut and installs with the factory hardware. Alright, with our upper strut spacer installed, we're going to go ahead and reinstall the factory strut into the Tundra. I'm going to line up the top. Get it started. I'm going to leave it, leave it a little loose. Um, because of the way we had to index the strut to keep it at the proper angle, we'll actually need to rotate this bottom mount slightly. Put a screwdriver in here to get some leverage, working around the axle. Watch yourself, it's greasy. That could be wrong. That's it. There we go. We'll leave that and that loose until final assembly, which we're ready to start. We'll grab the knuckle and begin reverse of the uninstallation. We'll put the knuckle on, make sure we stab the axle through the knuckle. We'll go ahead, get the tie rod mounted back on, get the upper ball joint mounted to the knuckle, put the rotor on and the caliper, and then we'll make sure we've got our brake lines and our ABS lines ran, including adding the drop bracket from Rough Country. We are finished with the portion of the front lift that is inside the wheel well. We've replaced our strut with our upper strut spacer, we've added our upper control arm, we've added our brake line relocation bracket, and we've went through and reinstalled everything that we took off to make removing the strut possible. Now we're ready to lower the differential with the differential relocation brackets, drop the sway bar down with the sway bar relocation brackets, and the last step and finalizing the front will be to add our skid plates. All right, we've got the differential supported and now we're going to remove two factory brackets and replace those with brackets that relocate the differential down slightly to get the best possible angle for our CV shafts. First things first, we're gonna remove this passenger side bracket, then we'll remove the driver side bracket and replace them with the rough country brackets.
All right, so I've got this driver side bracket installed loosely on the frame. Now we've got a spacer that goes in between the bracket and the differential to make up for the recess that is in the differential. Uh, since the bracket's flat and the diff is not, this makes up the difference. We will slide it into place and then bolt the bracket to the differential. These are the sway bar relocation brackets. Now, real estate is a premium in here. Uh, so what we've done is we've designed it slotted. You'll run your bolts up about a half inch, quarter inch from the frame. Then you can slide the bracket on the bolt and you'll finish tightening using uh, an open end or box end wrench. With the sway bar drop brackets in place, we'll go ahead and grab the factory sway bar. We'll install the end links onto the lower control arms, then swing the unit up and bolt it in place on the drop brackets. We'll plug in the steering, then the only thing left on the front is gonna be the skid plates, but we're gonna wait until we get the bumper cover back to put those on. All right, making our way to the rear. Uh, the rear, as is usual on lift kits, is gonna be a lot simpler than the front. Uh, we've got coil spring spacers for this particular Tundra. We've got relocation brackets for the shocks, relocation bracket for the track bar, and assorted hardware. We're gonna go ahead and get a couple of stands underneath the axle, that way we can drop it down, give us plenty of clearance to pull those coils out, add those spacers and those relocation brackets. We've got our stands in place and tension off the suspension. We'll go ahead and remove the sway bar link from the frame. We'll go ahead and take out the lower shock mount as well as the upper shock nut. Do the same on the driver's side. Then we'll pull the track bar bolt out at the axle. That should give us enough to raise the truck on the lift and pull the coils out. We'll go ahead and remove the shocks and then we'll start installing our Rough Country product. All right, this upper shock nut, when you turn it, more than likely, the entire shaft of the shock is gonna turn. So there's a notch on the top that will accept an eight millimeter. You don't need to put that on there hold the shaft, then you should be able to break that nut loose. I'm gonna keep it on there, make sure the shaft doesn't turn while I'm unbolting it. Once the initial tension is off of the upper shock mount, you can just go ahead and remove the nut and the shaft should stay steel. All right, let's get the track bar bolt out. All right, now we're gonna install our track bar relocation bracket. It goes shim in the bottom of the factory bracket. Then the relocation bracket sets into place. 
take our supplied bolts, go through both of those, and put the nut on it. We'll wait to tighten that. We've got a crush sleeve that's going to go into our bracket, and the factory track bar bolt will go through that and tighten down. We'll leave that loose so we can move everything around. The axle actually needs to come up to line up with the track bar so the axle is nice and centered. We'll wait for that. We've got hardware included that we'll attach the track bar to the bracket with, but for now, we'll go ahead and install our coil spring spacer. All right, before I get up under there where the quarters are tight, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna be doing. There is a factory hole on the back side of the coil spring mount. We're gonna use that to index our spacer. You can see the hole in the spacer. We're gonna put it in place, and we've got a bolt to run through. We're gonna reach over the frame and attach the nut. Now this is simply to hold this spacer in place while we reinstall the coil. Once the tension of the coil is on the spacer, it's not going anywhere. You need to wait on you. Let's get the shock relocation bracket installed. It's simply going to slip over the factory post coming off of the axle and we're going to reuse the factory bolt to attach it. It needs a particular angle kicked in and we're going to achieve that and brace it up with the shock mount brace. So we're going to take our supplied three-quarter bolt slide it into the bracket, take our brace, put it in place, it's just to hold it there momentarily, and we supply bolt and a flag nut. I'm going to thread the flag nut up into this factory mount the bolt through the bracket into the flag nut and secure it. That's going to firm up our shock mounting point and make sure the lower portion of the shock is at the correct angle. Now I can remove this bolt in preparation to install the shock. With the track bar relocation bracket installed, the next step is going to be to install the coils. We've already got the coil spacers up and in their place. We'll get the coils in on both sides, then we'll install the shocks, and that's going to complete the lift for the rear. All right, we've got our coils installed and we rotated them around to make sure that the end of the coil fits in the pocket properly. And then once everything is tightened down below, we'll come up top, tighten the upper shock mount, and that's gonna complete the install of the lift in the rear. This kit includes upper control arms and differential drop brackets to maintain the factory geometry. Up front, lift is achieved with a strut spacer and out back we use a coil spring spacer. Now this isn't a massive lift but it is bigger than a leveling kit and it's all we needed to run 35, 12, 50, 20s on this Tundra. 